Oh my God! No! Oh my God! Signed to Fairchild Air Force Base in 1988, Lieutenant Colonel Bud Holland had a reputation as a hot stick, a highly skilled pilot who pushed aircraft to their limits. In 91, Holland banked his B-52 to 80 degrees above his daughter's softball game. He lost control, dropping a thousand feet in altitude, but recovered. In May of the same year, Holland flew directly over airshow spectators, violating safety regulations. This was witnessed by many, including the wing commander, but no action was taken. In July of the same year, Holland did a flyover for a change of command and performed a 45 degree bank at just 100 feet above ground, well below minimum. For this, he received only a verbal reprimand with no documented action. At an air show in 92, he did something known as a hammerhead, which gives the audience a top view of the aircraft as it appears to be flying on its side. It caused so much stress on the plane that the fuselage popped 500 rivets. Yet, his supervisors made him an instructor and put him in charge of evaluating all Fairchild's B-52 pilots. In 93, during a training mission near Guam, Holland flew way closer to the other B-52 than regulations allowed. He also told his navigator to videotape the bombs as they fell from inside the bomb bay, also against regulations. The navigator later brought the video to the attention of leadership. The deputy operations commander allegedly said, Okay, I don't want to know anything about that video. I don't care. And another one told him to conceal the evidence. In March of 94, Holland commanded a training mission to the Acma bombing range. The aircraft was filmed crossing one ridge line about 30 feet above the ground. The photography crew had to stop filming and take cover as Holland passed a second time, clearing the ridge line by less than three feet. The co-pilot, Lieutenant Colonel McGeehan, had to grab the controls to prevent Holland from hitting the ridge, while the other crew members were screaming at Holland to climb, climb. Holland responded with laughter. McGeehan told leadership that Holland nearly crashed and needed to be grounded, but he was overruled, giving Holland only a verbal reprimand. Again, the incident was left undocumented. It was at this time McGeehan decided that to protect his subordinates, he would co-pilot any future missions Holland commanded. So, when Holland was picked to fly the last B-52 for the 94 air show, McGeehan ended up as his co-pilot. At about 2 p.m. on June 24, 1994, Holland departed Fairchild Air Force Base on a practice run for the upcoming air show. On board was his co-pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Mark McGeehan, Lieutenant Colonel Kenneth Huston was the radar navigator, and Colonel Robert Wolfe as a safety observer. It was Wolfe's finny flight, a tradition in which retiring air crew members are met at the airfield by friends and family shortly after landing on their final flight in Dallas with water. Holland was executing touch-and-goes, which involves the aircraft landing and taking off immediately after. On one of the approaches, a KC-135 they had been flying with was still on the runway, so ATC instructed them to go around for a second attempt. Holland banked sharply, left at 60 degrees, only 250 feet above the ground. His airspeed then slowed, and his plane continued to a bank of 90 degrees. They increased engine power and tried to get the wings to level out, but it was too late. The aircraft stalled, and the low altitude made any attempt to recover impossible, so they crashed. Within minutes, rescue teams were on the scene to fight the fire. It took nearly three hours to extinguish the flames, and an additional five to find the remains of the four crew members. The only recognizable piece of the aircraft that remained was the skeletal frame of the tail section that loomed over the crash site. The plane narrowly missed a building where nearly 300 people were enjoying a farewell party for a squadron commander, and Holland crashed down only 50 feet from the base's nuclear weapon storage area. The investigation concluded that Holland's personality and behaviors, U.S. Air Force leaders' delayed or inadequate reactions to earlier incidents involving Holland, and the sequence of events during the aircraft's final flight were the primary factors. They also criticized Fairchild's chain of command for permitting Holland to continue flying, despite a three-year pattern of reckless behavior. 
Holland considered himself the best B-52 pilot who ever lived and took pride in displaying his prowess in inappropriate, irresponsible ways. An instructor pilot who had flown with Holland said he had attended a special course that explored edge-of-the-envelope maneuvers to be used during war and felt they wouldn't have taught him these things if they didn't expect him to use them. It was decided that only Colonel Pellerin should be court-martialed. He was charged with three counts of dereliction of duty. He pleaded guilty to the first two counts and the third count was dismissed. In the end, he was only given a reprimand for his personnel file and a fine of $7,500. Lieutenant Colonel Huston's widow, Elizabeth Huston, said the Air Force was just using Pellerin as a scapegoat, claiming Holland was actually encouraged to perform these aerobatics. Base commanders had permitted the dangerous maneuvers for years, and Holland flew the exact same maneuvers at the previous air show. Sadly, this wasn't the only bad news for the base that week. Just four days earlier, Dean Melberg, an emotionally disturbed ex-U.S. Air Force serviceman, entered Fairchild's hospital armed, fatally shooting four people and wounding 22 more before being killed by a security policeman. Just weeks before his death, Lt. Col. McGeehan, the only officer who ever tried to stop Holland, wrote this, When we think of those who went before us, we should do so with humility, respecting their great personal sacrifice. When we honor our heritage and those with whom we share a common bond and purpose, we are all enriched, and our lives are made a little bit more worth living.